All right guys, welcome back to the channel. I have an exclusive look at the Okai EB50 e-bike. Very futuristic, very cool looking. Let's get into it and show you right now. Just look at this bike and how lovely it looks. It's in my favorite color, blue. It has some very cool features on it that I wanna show you, but it also has some cons that I also wanna tell you about too if you guys were thinking about picking one of these up. So it is rocking 26 inch wheels by four inch wide. These are huge fat boy tires and they do have quick releases right here. So if you do wanna take the wheel off, you can take it off in about five seconds. You got nice, glossy, unbranded forks right here. I believe on the top it does say RST on the very top of the preload adjustment. Um, you got some fenders on here. They are plastic, so they do move a little bit, a little flimsy, but for the most part, they're gonna keep you from getting water on yourself when you go through puddles or if it rains and whatnot. Nice travel in the suspension, uh, no problems with that. You do have your lockout right here if you do not wanna use the suspension at all and you wanna stiffen it up. You got your battery all down the bottom of the frame. Looks pretty cool, you got a little cover. Reminds me of a little Tesla if you're gonna charge it and then your charging port is covered up with a little rubber plug right here also, so should be okay. No water should be able to get in there whatsoever. The wires right here go into the frame, so they're very hidden, you don't see too much. This is really the only wires you ever see on this bike. Everything is literally inside the frame, which is very nice. Come over here, this is what's cool. This little line right here, this lights up. There's an actual app for this bike, and you can customize the colors of that. You can change the speed. You can do the mile per hour or kilometers per hour. In the app itself, you can actually go through and you can see all your bike settings. Now I have to have my thumb over the app because it does tell you where you live at. So <laughs> gotta be careful on that, but it literally lets you change your headlight. You can lock the battery. It gives you a diagnosis on how the battery is. You got your ride settings, battery information, and ride history. Pretty cool. Coming over here to the seat, it's very nice and well made. Uh, no problems with it. I've actually been riding this bike for the last two weeks and haven't had a problem with the seat whatsoever. It's pretty comfortable. I do like that they give you a handle right here. So when you do have to move the bike, you can literally grab it, pick it up and move it around. So it's a very nice feature that they added on here. Again, you have a quick release right here also. So if you want to uh, raise and lower the seat, you can. The only con that I have about this setup is they do give you this rechargeable light, which there's a button under here that you push. It's not very bright, um, that's one of the cons, but another con is that if you wanna ride with this seat way down here, the light gets blocked by the fender. So when I start lowering the seat, watch, I'll show you. If I wanna ride with the seat like that, you're not gonna be able to see that light from behind the bike. You would literally have to raise it up like I did above the fender and then you'll be okay. Moving to the back, you got reflectors on your wheels. Obviously these huge, massive tires, they look gorgeous. And you sit really high up off the ground, you got fenders on the back. You got a Shimano cassette back here, very nice. And then you have a Shimano Altus derailleur that goes to a decently sized chain ring. It's not a very big chain ring, but technically this bike only goes 20 miles an hour, which is another thing I wanna talk about. With this bike being 750 watts with a peak of about 1,000 watts, I would have thought that they would have made this bike at least hit 28 miles per hour. I'm not sure why they limit it. As soon as you hit 20 miles an hour, it gets there real quick and then it just cuts your power back. So I'm not exactly sure why they did that. Maybe regulations or where they want to sell this bike at. Maybe they just wanted to keep it as a class two e-bike. Not for sure about that, but I'll contact the company and see if I can uh, put it down in the description if I get an answer. Coming back to the top really quick is you have your brakes right here, which I'm very surprised on how futuristic this bike looks and all the features it comes with. I'm surprised that they put Tektro cable brakes on here or mechanical brakes. I wish they would have put hydraulic brakes on there. I'm kind of wondering why they did. Maybe just to save cost on the bike because this bike is under $2,000. But anyways, so you got a bell right here. It's not, a, it's not bad, I actually like it. Um, it's not super loud, but it's very nice and convenient to grab and just hit it really quick. You have your throttle on the left side, and then over here is where you have your power button. So you can turn this bike on three different ways. You can turn it on from right here, hit that, and now your display comes on. And another way you can turn this bike on is with an NFC key. They give you two of these in the box when you order the bike, and all you have to do is come up to here, tap the screen, give it a second, and it comes on. And then the third way you turn on the bike is you can actually do it with your phone. You can power it on and off with your phone once you connect it to Bluetooth. 
So talking about the display a little tiny bit, you have some uh, options in here where you can put the bike in walking mode and then you can hit the throttle and it will go slow. You can put it in zero so if anyone hits the throttle it's not going to take off and then you got gear selectors one through three. That's going to be your uh, pedal assist or your throttle input on your speed. You got your screen brightness setting right here and then you have your interface style. This is kind of cool. Um, you can come in here and you can change the interface that you want it to have. So like if it's at nighttime, you probably want to put a night one on there. But if it's daytime, you probably want to put a daytime on there. And then you can lock the battery with that little button right there. You can hear it make a little bit of noise. You got the ambient lighting setting. So if you switch this off, you can turn the ambient light off. It would be nice if you can change the color on this display. You can only turn the lights on and off from the display, but you can't change the color. The only way you can change the color is from the app on your phone. You can go through and you can have a color wheel of like 255 colors and you just kind of scroll around and pick whatever color you want. The color isn't as accurate as I want it to be. When I was trying to select red, it looks more like a pink. Um, it might just be uh, these things on the side on how it's putting out the light and everything like that. But for the most part, these are very bright at night and they look super, super cool. You got your riding records right here. So it tells me uh, my last couple rides. So that's kind of cool. It tells me my power consumption and cycling, how much I did and all energy savings and all that kind of stuff. That's pretty cool. And then you have your vehicle information. This tells you the frame number, the software and all that kind of stuff. So you can actually do a firmware upgrade on this bike. So maybe down the road with the suggestions that we've been telling them, maybe they would be able to up the speed on this bike or maybe there's a setting to get into the advanced stuff and you can kind of up the speed, maybe put it in turbo mode. And if not that, it'd be cool for them to add the functionality to be able to change the ambient light on the bike with the display instead of having to pull out your phone every time. Over on this side, you have your Shimano 8-speed right here. Very nice. Moving down on the frame, you have this little open little flap right here. And there's where the key comes in place. So this key folds and then you unfold it. And this is what goes in here and this is what releases the battery. Come in here, line it up like you would another key, push it in there, turn it, and the whole thing pops out. Moving down the bike, you have the thick cranks right here. These arms are huge. Then you have your standard pedals right here with reflectors on them. Coming down here, you're going to see this cable wire is going to the back motor. You have a quick disconnect right here, which is very nice, similar to the Super 73 or some of the other e-bikes out there. Makes it very nice, so when you do have to replace your tube on this, you don't have to disconnect everything from the bike like way up in the front or deal with all these wires. You just have to disconnect this undo the brakes and the bolts in the back and you should be good to go to fix your flat. Now I know we talked about the wattage of this motor but I want to make sure you guys know this is a Bafang motor back here and these are quality quality motors so this should last you you shouldn't have any issues at all. So if you guys are thinking about picking up a bike like this you can buy one you have 14 days to ride it, and if you don't like it you can return it for free and they do give you a one year warranty if anything goes bad on the bike. One other thing I wanted to mention is that they do put a little sleeve right here and you might be wondering what that's for and that's because this chain is a little bit loose so that's something I noticed when I've been riding the bike is that this chain makes a lot of noise but they did put a rubber uh, protector over here just so it doesn't scratch up the frame because this chain will hit. So that's a good thing that they did and uh, coming over here you're going to see I already have a big old scratch on it so thanks FedEx when you guys shipped it appreciate it. But overall, fantastic looking bike. I mean, this thing turns heads. I've been riding it, like I said, for the last couple weeks and it's just been turning heads, especially on 4th of July when I rode it. Everyone was just staring at this bike. You have to see how this looks at night. This light lights up your whole legs as you're riding. I mean, it's just, it's so badass. But uh, let's get on the ride and let's go check it out and do a first person view on how it is. Oh, and real quick, one more thing before we get on the way. Um, this is a depowered charger. This is what comes with it and it is 2.8 amps. So it's almost three amps. All right, just because I wanna be cool and in the future, I'm gonna turn my bike on with the key. Yeah, there we go. All right, so let's start in mode number one or system number one and uh, see how it feels. So assist number one almost feels like full power and it gets us to 20 miles an hour in no problem whatsoever. All right, so let's go to assist number two.
Yeah, so we still get to 20 miles an hour. It feels perfectly fine. It feels the same as number one. Let me go up to three. All right, we're in mode number three. Let's go. One, two, three. Yeah, so I'm not seeing any difference. I feel like mode number one should give us like eight to 10 miles an hour. Mode two should maybe give us like, I don't know, 14 or 15. And then mode three should give us 20. All right, let's come off roading real quick. Let's see how this bike does. It does have front suspension and you got fat tires on it. So it should be pretty comfortable. And it's not too bad, actually. I would probably give it a, uh, a seven out of 10. So I'm gonna go down to assist number one and I'm gonna come up this and I'm gonna see how it does. So I'm just gonna pedal, I'm not gonna use the throttle. Woo! Oh, okay, okay. Pretty slow, pretty slow. Let's try it on mode number two. All right, mode number two, here we come. Okay, yeah, that's, that's a little bit easier. Definitely a little bit easier on mode number two. Let's go to mode number three. Pedaling only. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huge difference. Huge, huge difference. So you guys should be able to get up any hill or any terrain you need to, especially with the eight speed on here. So you guys can pedal at the same time and uh, make it up stuff like this with ease. All right. So the first thing you're going to notice when you get on this bike is it sits very high very very high it's like a half step through design um so people should be able to get on it the seat goes very low to the frame so even if you're a short person you should be able to get on this bike no problem it's just when you're actually finally sitting on it the wheels are so big you feel like you're taller than most of the cars it feels very cool it feels like you're just kind of up in the air i like it it looks like a tank and it looks so futuristic i think that's why over the last two weeks i've been riding this bike and just having a blast with it coming over to this side they have a throttle on the left it's not your standard normally it's on the right but the reason why it's on this left hand side is because you have your shimano eight speed over here um, not a big deal it's just something you got to get used to because most bikes that come out throttles are on this side if they don't have a gear selector then over here you have your plus and minus buttons that's how we were going through the pedal assist uh one to three you also have zero so the bike doesn't move at all when you hit the throttle and then you also have walking mode so you can go all the way down the walking mode and you should be able to walk this bike with no resistance and it should slightly move. And talk about these handlebars really quick that everything's sitting on. These are like a three inch rise or three and a half inch rise. I mean, they're very tall. Um, I like them. They feel very comfortable. You're not too slouched over like this, but you're not like extended like this. You know, I mean, it feels very good. It feels like you're in control of the bike. No problems at all next to the dedicated buttons over here for your pedal assist you have your uh, headlight switch all you have to do is tap it once your headlight comes on probably see that and then tap it again and it comes off very easy to do now you have your power mode to turn the bike on and off right underneath i'm kind of wondering why they did that when you have two other options to turn this bike on you have the nsc key basically and then you have your phone you can turn the bike on with your phone so I'm kind of lost on why they put a dedicated button on the bike. Maybe they're thinking if your key dies or your phone dies, you have another option to turn it on. But to me, I feel like that kind of defeats the purpose of it being kind of cool and unique and just being able to turn it on from this right here. And then coming over to this side, you have your Shimano eight speed, which we were using earlier to get up that hill. Very nice. Shimano always makes great parts. They're nice and smooth. There's no problem shifting. You got your front one back here and then you got this one to use your thumb with. I've always liked Shimano parts. They should last as long as you keep the bike. And then if we talk about these grips really quick, they are locking. So if you do want to move them very easily, you just have to remove the nut and then you can just move them wherever you want. Like right now, they're too high for me. This one's lower and this one's higher. I should have adjusted them before I came out on my ride, but should be super easy because right now it's like my hand sitting like this, but I'd rather have my hand like this and it's form fitting to your uh, palm. So I kind of have to have my hands a little up, a little awkward, but I mean, easy to fix though. So I like what they did with the headlight. I like how they put it up here. Uh, mine's gonna be a little bit higher than what yours should be because I uh, mine's flipped around. I know mine's backwards. Remember a lot of e-bikes, they put them on the fender way down here on this nut. 
And what happens with that is if you're riding and all of a sudden you notice, you're like, hey, uh, I can't see the road. You kind of have to come way down here and you have to adjust it with your hand. And that's kind of sketchy if you're doing 20 miles an hour or so. So with the light being up here, it's kind of nice that you can kind of move it around wherever you want. So depending on the terrain you're at, like if you're going downhill and you, you need it to look farther down, you can just push it down. And if you're coming up a hill, you can bend it up. Very nice that it's up here. Um, it looked weird at first when I got it, but then it makes perfect sense to me. So after we talked about all that, let's kind of go over the brakes. Now this bike is lovely. It has all this futuristic stuff on it and I'm kind of surprised that they put mechanical brakes on it. I'm pretty sure it was just to save money in the long run to keep it under $2,000. That's not to say that these Tektro brakes don't work. Um, I've used these on BMX bikes and 20 miles an hour, I mean, it's decently fast, but it's not, it's not crazy fast. It shouldn't be that bad on stopping. So we can do some tests and we can see exactly how these brakes work. Let's get up to 20 miles an hour. All right, we're at 20. Let's go right out of this uh, fence right here where it starts. One, two, three. Oh man. Yeah, these, these brakes are good enough for this bike. Definitely, we can do the test again real quick. Let's get up to 20 miles an hour. All right, we're at 20. Let's go off the second red tree right here. One, two, three. Woohoo! Yeah, you don't have a single problem with these brakes. It's just hydraulics feel so much better in the hands. But I guess I can see why they went with that because that stopped really good. And we're, this isn't like a 40 mile an hour bike, so that's perfectly fine. I wish I would have noticed that earlier. I heard something rubbing when we were in the dirt. So, ah, I messed up the tire a little tiny bit, but it's all right. Um, so yeah, just make sure when you do get this, um, when you do put this bike together, this is one of the parts that you have to put together is the front wheel, the front fender, and the headlight. And I believe the seat also, I think you have to put that on. I'm not 100% sure, I kind of forget. You do have to put the pedals on, and then that light that's behind the seat, um, that just snaps onto the, the seat post. But yeah, I just wanted to come out here and see the bike in the sun and show you how gorgeous it is, even though FedEx scratched it. And it's pretty dusty now, but uh, gorgeous, gorgeous looking bike. I mean, this is going to turn heads if you were to buy one of these things. And if you want a comfortable cruiser that doesn't go too fast, you can't beat it. And it gives you real information on this display of how many miles you have left. So it's saying we have 17 miles left the way I've been riding. It, it just off of your riding. And we are down to 79% of the battery. Very cool stuff right there. The seat isn't bad at all either. Um, I don't have any complaints about the seat. Like, yeah, if you want a bigger, wider seat, that's easy to do. You just go down to your local bicycle shop and you can put one on there. But yeah, not a single problem with the seat yet. So see, now that I've uh, been talking about that, our miles went down to 16 miles. It just goes off of how you ride and if you're pedaling and what assist you're on. So that is very, very cool. Hopefully you guys are liking the content on these videos. I really appreciate you guys watching. Um, I'm gonna be doing a second video on this bike where I commute to work and see how it is, which that'll also show us uh, the headlight. You guys get to see the tail light on how it looks at night. And then you guys can also see how these LEDs look on the side, which is badass. You have to watch the second video. So if you're not subscribed, subscribe, turn on post notifications because you have to check these out. Um, during the day, I was just thinking about it right now. During the day, you might want to turn these off because they're so washed out that you can't even see that there's a light on this bike. And you could probably save some battery life. I don't know exactly how much it's going to change. I mean, these LEDs are probably not pulling very much power at all. But during the day, you probably want to just have them off. Which, let me pull over here real quick because you can't use this display. It's a touch display, but you can't use it while you're riding which is a safety thing. It's a good thing. So since I've been having this on the whole time, let me finally take this off so you guys can see the screen a little tiny bit better. I put this in my pocket so I don't litter. Over here, it says 20 miles. Um, it actually went up since I was sitting there for such a long time. So that's what it's telling us we can get on the bike from our riding style. So since I sat there, it went up. But overall, this is a fantastic bike. It's definitely gonna be a conversation starter if you uh, have this in your area. I mean, it's just so unique. There's nothing out there that looks like this. For me personally, I wish the bike went a little tiny bit faster. I think 28 miles per hour would have been the perfect sweet spot for this bike. But like I said, maybe on an update, maybe they could put a turbo mode or they could put mode number four and they can have it go up to 28 miles per hour. Or maybe 
they can let me know how to get into the advanced settings and I can change some stuff and uh, take the governor off. We'll just see. If anything changes, I'll definitely talk about it in my next video when I take it to work and we'll see how it is to commute. And uh, if anything, if I find out before this video goes up, I will definitely put it in the description, which I will also put a link in the description if I have any type of discount code on this bike, which I should think right now they're giving about a hundred bucks off to the first couple people that buy one. But you gotta act fast and you gotta go over there like right now and check it out. If this thing did 28 miles an hour, this would probably be one of my top cruiser bikes to take around and just show off to people. I can't wait to bring it to work and show people. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to record everybody at work or record everyone's reaction, but I'm very curious to see what people say about this bike because it is a looker for sure. So see you guys in the next one. Appreciate it.